they call me Sal. Salmonia. The letters stand for self alarming liquid. That's cause I got a very recognizable smell. Ugh. That warns people before I can cause them any harm. I got two very different sides to me. People love me cause I grant many life enriching wishes. In fact, I'm the most popular chemical that humans use. <laughs> In my purest form, as anhydrous ammonia, I serve as a natural refrigerant used by industrial processes to keep food preserved in cold rooms. I am most often used as an agricultural fertilizer. In fact, I have been credited for increasing the world's food production tremendously. I'm also used to treat water, clean floors, and I aid in the development of many products, from paint to ceramics. Oh, and I'm also considered to be one of the natural refrigerants of choice by the environmental community. That's cause I don't attack the Earth's ozone or create a greenhouse gas when I'm released into the air. On the other hand, I can be a challenging character to humans. You might say that I am a real stinker. <laughs> I'm specially feared by those who don't understand me, and I'm dangerous to those who are ignorant about my behavior. A one warning to those of you who work on ammonia systems. Consider that I exist under pressure in pipelines at all times, and always double check the position of upstream and downstream valves before messing with my system. I've surprised many operators because they failed to recognize my potential. The operator opens the system and BAM! I spit with an aerosol spray that will freeze, burn, blind, or asphyxiate humans caught in my trail. You know, there's a few important things about my chemistry. When I'm in a pure form, they call me anhydrous ammonia. When I mix with water, they call me aqua ammonia or ammonium hydroxide. Anhydrous means without water, and that's why I'm always so darn thirsty. I love water, and I seek it out every time I can. I find it in the obvious places and in places that you humans are sensitive. Your eyes, nose, throat, armpits, groin wherever moisture gathers. You'll find me in several forms. I can be a liquid, aerosol, a dense white gas cloud, or invisible vapor. Raise the temperature and my pressure goes up. Lower the pressure and I cool down. As my volume, pressure, and temperature increase, so does my power and potential to do damage if I escape. It's best for you if I'm stopped when my release is just beginning, because as more of me escapes, I become dangerous for the people and the environment located downwind. In some cases, all it takes is closing the door to the room to contain me. When released from a pressurized vessel, I spit out as a super cold aerosol. My droplets absorb heat and super cool the air to as low as minus 100 degrees Fahrenheit. Professional responders often knock me down and contain me by throwing a tarp over my leaking container to hold me from escaping downwind. Because my dense gas is buoyant and very cold as it floats downwind, I mix with the humidity in the air. When I'm heated, my vapors escape to the upper atmosphere. The wind pushes me around buildings and I bounce up to the sky. On humid days, I stay lower to the ground for longer periods because I mix with the humidity in the air. When I arrive at my home in the sky, I relax because pressures and temperatures are low. It's only that occasional bolt of lightning that'll charge me up and send me with the rain to earth. When I'm used as a refrigerant or transported in a vehicle, I'm contained in a tank. And while living in the tank, I need room to expand because heat makes my pressure grow. So always leave me a vapor space of at least 20%. When I exceed my safe operating pressures, I will escape out of the bottle. I 
pop the cork, so to speak. Or, technically speaking, I break through a relief valve and my vapor escapes so as to help control the pressures inside the system. Once in a while, rust, corrosion, operator error, or a poorly designed system will cause me to break through a weak spot in a vessel or a pipeline. If you are near the release point, you could become seriously injured by my sudden release. Stay away from the system unless you know what you're doing and are protected with appropriate personal protective equipment. Many times, my leaks are small and very noticeable because of my distinctive odor. It could be a pinhole leak or a small leak from a pump packing or a valve. This is when the trained operator, equipped with proper personal protective equipment, should follow procedures and stop my release when I'm small and controllable. And you wait too long, and I may surprise you with my sudden appearance as a powerful aerosol, a dense gas cloud. Oh, and one more thing. Here's a word of caution for the person who has a harder time smelling me at low levels. In some cases, this person becomes the wise guy who considers others as sissies because they smell me at about five parts per million and become concerned, while he doesn't even start to smell me until about 20 parts per million. So, of course, he feels superior, like a tough guy, or so he thinks. Your ability to smell depends on the quality of the sensing system in your nose. In some cases, the nerves in the nose become too weak, and the person might be suffering from what the medical folks would say is olfactory fatigue. So, you see, the guy who smells me at five parts per million is actually better equipped to take charge so as to deal with my stink when I'm only a little tiny fart. And you, tough guy, don't think you can outsmart or outpower me. I can take you up before you even know I'm coming. If you are caught in my vapor trail, escape by moving around me, lateral and upwind, or go inside a building and shelter in place. I rarely go indoors. The warm air keeps me out unless I'm sucked in by the heating and ventilation system. Just shut that system down and close the doors and windows and I will stay out. My super cold aerosol and liquid can be very damaging to the human skin. I draw out the moisture in the skin and underlying tissue to shrink and freeze burn with a painful and very noticeable scar. In some cases, my cold aerosol will freeze clothing to the skin. You got to use water to move me out of the skin and thaw the clothing before removal. Continue using water, 30 minutes of washing, to draw me out of your inner tissues. Do not rub as you wash. That'll only cause more injury. And don't let any of my aerosol drops hit your eye. There's only a thin skin protecting an eyeball full of water. Blindness is fairly certain if I penetrate that skin and get into the inner eyeball. Your best choice is to wear chemical-resistant, non-vented goggles, a face shield, or better yet, an air-purifying respirator to protect yourself when I'm present. One more thing. When large amounts of my dense gas are allowed to escape into an enclosed and unventilated room, I have been known to ignite. A powerful electric arc can ignite my dense gas into a ball of fire. Although I pass through this flash fire phase rather quickly, you should never forget that Salmonia is powerful in many different ways. Another way to unleash my powers is to throw water on me. Ooh, I get spitting mad when water's dumped on me. I spit and I flash into a heavy gas. I don't like that kind of surprise. And you won't like to be around me when that happens because my vapors will hang around low to the ground as I evaporate from the water. People, listen closely. I am here to help you understand how to control Sal. I know how to stay safe in his presence. First, you should always remember my name, Lance. L-A-N-C-E reflects the actions you should take. 
L stands for life safety. Safety is always our first concern. When you see Sal escape, warn those that are in the room or affected area. Establish a hot zone perimeter and back off. A stands for alert. Call for help. Sound the alarm. Call for your on-site response team and get help from your fellow employees to figure out the next steps in the procedure adopted by your workplace. N, notify 911. Follow your emergency notification operating procedures because calling 911 will let the right people know what is happening. Call them early and they can help to control the problem when it is small. C, contain the release. Close the door behind you to hold Sal inside the room or area and prevent Sal from escaping. When Sal is contained in a room, the room will cool down and air will move toward him, holding him in place. As Sal warms, he will become more active and want to move a little more aggressively. And E, escape. Escape Sal by leaving the room and moving laterally or upwind from the release. And if you can't escape, shelter in place. The best way to avoid an injury is to prevent it from happening in the first place. This is why good service, maintenance, and disciplined work habits are important. Injuries and fatalities occur when people get complacent when working around ammonia and without wearing protective gear. Those who work, repair, or open a system containing sal should always wear coveralls, gloves, ammonia monitor, helmet, radio, and a full face respirator. Sal usually escapes without warning, and he can be very dangerous to anyone who is located within 10 to 15 feet of his initial release. It only takes a few minutes for an entire room to fill with asphyxiating vapor. Protective clothing will repel Sal's immediate threat and give you time to either control his release or escape before Sal endangers you and others. It's important to have a radio so you can quickly give your Lance report. Avoiding the dangers and risks associated with Sal is easy. First, Sal is easy to detect. You can literally smell him a mile away at five parts per million. That is unless you're suffering from olfactory fatigue. The first official concern for your health starts at 25 ppm. You are allowed that level of exposure for eight hours in a 40 hour week. At 35 ppm, you should leave after 15 minutes of exposure. And at 50 ppm, you should leave immediately. Only those with appropriate respirators should work in 50 to 300 ppm. With higher ppm levels, the atmosphere is considered immediately dangerous to life and health. Only those with proper emergency response training and appropriate personal protective equipment should work in higher levels. When you first smell cell, move out and warn others to do the same. If you are outside when you smell cell, move laterally to the wind direction and upwind or shelter in place. Do not move through an aerosol gas cloud. Go around or retreat to a safe location and call for help. The power of Sal's existence is dependent on the volume of his release and the weather conditions that exist. Humid, foggy days make him want to linger, while dry and warm days will send him to the sky rapidly. As you get closer to him, his risk grows dramatically. When you shelter in place, you should close all doors, turn off the heating and ventilation system, and tune into your local emergency broadcast system for details about what the public safety response team is recommending for your next steps. Use your radio and call for any help you may need. And if you don't have a radio, use a phone and call 911. They will relay your needs to the incident commander. Close the door on Sal. He is easy to hold back. Take it from me, Sal will hurt you. At the first sign of Sal's smell, get the fresh air and breathe deeply. You will continue to smell and feel Sal in your nose and throat. It may take as much as a full day for his odor to completely leave. Just like when you smell chlorine for some time after a swim in the pool. Your body can handle most small vapor exposures with no long-term effects. At higher levels, your eyes will water, your nose will run with uncontrollable mucus, which is a good thing because it will help flush Sal out. After 300 ppm, Sal's attack on your respiratory system will cause you to cough. 
As levels increase, so does the burning sensation of Sal's attack on your skin as he mixes with the moisture of your sweat and body tissue. At about 1500 ppm, the coughing is uncontrollable. And then at about 1700 ppm, your brain will signal for your breathing to stop. This is your body's way of protecting your lungs from serious damage and you must move to fresher air or be supported with respiratory protection in order to breathe. After a heavy exposure, you may feel pain in your lungs when you breathe. You might also hear a rattling noise in the lungs, much like what happens when people get pneumonia. Sal gave you some good advice on how to avoid injury from your exposure to his powerful aerosol. Now listen closely because I will summarize the most important things for you to do as first aid. First, call 911. They know how to treat, decontaminate, and transport those who need advanced medical care. Secondly, remove your contaminated clothing unless your clothing is frozen to your skin because you have been hit by an aerosol or liquid ammonia. At that point, remember Sal's warning. Use water to thaw the clothing from your skin before removing. Continue to wash with tap water for 30 minutes to draw out the ammonia and don't rub your skin or use ointments over the burn. Flush and then seek medical care for serious burns and blisters. And lastly, if you have swallowed some ammonia, drink milk or water or orange juice. Do not vomit and do not give any liquids to a person who is unconscious. This is serious. So call 911 and seek advanced medical care. And now for a few final reminders. First, for those who work on ammonia systems, protect yourself, your skin, your eyes, respiratory system, and always be aware of clear access to an exit. Those caught in the immediate vicinity of a sudden aerosol release are at least five times more at risk of serious injury. When Sal escapes from a vessel in an outside location, you should move lateral or upwind. And if that doesn't work, look for somewhere where you can shelter in place. Sal doesn't move indoors unless doors are open or ventilation systems draw him in. And listen to this one. Never, never allow Sal to mix with chlorine. They don't like each other. It's like putting deadly enemies together to do battle. The mixture is extremely toxic. An explosive white gas cloud erupts. It's deadly. Sal doesn't like any acid and reacts very violently. And finally, if enough of Sal's liquid is allowed to migrate through the soil, it can form harmful nitrates. Too much nitrate in the drinking water will cause harm, especially for the very young, the infirm, or those with a weak respiratory and immune system. Contain Sal so that he can not soak into the soil. The trained responder can neutralize or let Sal evaporate to the sky. It's a much safer way to manage his risks. So in summary, remember this. Sal will always warn you of his presence. When you smell him, it's time to move lateral and upwind or shelter in place where Sal can go around you. Sal tends to stay together in a cool gas cloud and travels with the wind in a V pattern, moving up and down as he absorbs moisture in the air. Close the door to the room from where he is escaping and he will stay to himself for the time it takes you and others to find safety. Be aware if there are any sources of ignition that may ignite his gas cloud. And if you are working around the system, be like me. Wear personal protection equipment and respect the powers of Sal. Oh, by the way, when we meet again, I will give you information on the next steps to managing Sal when he escapes from a vessel. This acronym, SIMPLE, stands for Sources of Ignition Need to be Controlled. Isolate the release upstream and downstream. Manage the pressure to reduce the power of the release. Positive pressure ventilation with a plan for the downwind effect. Lance, do it again, and this time make sure to notify the regulators. And emergency response plan. We recommend the 30-minute plan. The 30-minute plan outlines the four phases of an emergency and helps to create an effective incident action plan and safety plan. Yeah.